Now, after running the screener uh, on the companies, you have to do a deep dive. We call it fundamental analysis. Let's talk about deep dive. Now, in deep dive and before investing into the company, you want to understand the company end to end. You want to understand the financial statements of the company. You want to understand the management of the company, the brand building, spending on R&D and technology, sales growth, cash flows of the company, etc. Let us begin with discussing financial statements. Financial statements represent the statement, statement of affairs of the company. It includes profit and loss statements, balance sheet, uh, cash flows, notes to accounts, etc. You should understand the statement of affairs before investing into a company. For a listed company, you get profit and loss account at, at the end of every quarter. You get balance sheets at the end of every 30th September and 31st March of the financial year. You also get annual reports at the end of every financial year, which gives you a lot of insights as an investor. Understanding the annual reports, you can get a lot of insights on the business. You get director's report, which gives you a lot of insights on what the directors think about the business. You get uh, details on book value of the company, which uh, helps you understand whether the company is undervalued or overvalued as per the book value. You get to understand the leverage position of the company, which helps you understand uh, the details of the debt and how much the company has been able to reduce the debt over time. You get details on working capital management of the company. You get details on what capex the company made during the year. You also get details on return on equity uh, that the company delivered in the last financial year. Let's talk about the second and the most critical piece, which is corporate governance of the management. The management is like the vanguard of the stakeholders. Management is the driver of the company. Many a times we have seen that failure of management or corporate governance has led to fraud and defaults by the companies. Let's think about investments made in DHFL, Yes Bank, Satyam Computers, uh, Jet Airways, where the investor's wealth was wiped out. Well, all these companies are under various forums for investigation on fraud by the management. Many of the key people of these companies are either in jail or have represented a term in jail. Now, how do you assess a corporate governance in a company? To understand the corporate governance, we have to understand the education profile of the uh, management, the dividend paying history, the commitment of the management towards the shareholders, the disclosures that the company is making towards its shareholders, the R&D spend, brand building that the company is doing, uh, etc. A corporate governance is not only about integrity, it's also about propriety and efficiency. A, a management might not have a bad intention, but he might uh, fail the business because of his inefficiency. The third important point while doing deep dive is business growth. You have to understand whether the business growth is basis volumes growth or price growth or both. Is the growth sustainable? What are the key drivers uh, of products or segments uh, that have resulted in this growth? How much market share has the company gained? Is the growth in line higher, lower than the industry growth rates? Let's take for example, with the advent of electronic vehicles, the business of internal combustion engine looks weak. The next two points are R&D and technology spend. Now, in these types of disruption, uh, R&D spend and technological spend is highly critical. You have to continuously innovate, improve your products and services in order to stay in the game and make money for your investors. You can look at uh, the section in the annual report which is technological absorption, adaption, and innovation to look for further details on this. The next important point is the cash flow statements. The cash flow statements have details of operating activities, financing activities, and investing activities that the company did in the last financial year. 
usually the uh, cash flows from the company is higher than the net profit of the company because of the non-cash items like depreciation. How the company uses its cash is of paramount importance. In many a cases, we also get a lot of information about corporate governance. Let's say for example, the company has a healthy cash flow, the capex plans are not there, whereas the company is still not paying dividends. That means that the promoters are not willing to reward their small shareholders. In another example, the cash flows are good. The management do not have capex plans, the dividends are not there, but the company is repaying its debt. We can still give the company the benefit of the doubt. In another example, the cash flows are good and are being spent on the management for their personal expenditure, say their personal holidays. That raises a red flag. What we want to say here is cash flows tells us a lot about the company's management's credibility and capabilities and business future. Lesson number two, creating and managing a growth portfolio. We invest in stocks with the intention to either earn profits or earn dividends or earn both of them. But instead, some stocks go negative. Well, what goes wrong with those stocks? Let us try to understand some age-old principles to know more. The first culprit is absence of a strategy. To invest in stock markets, you need to have a strategy. There are some strategies which are pretty safe but they don't let you earn much money. Now other strategies are risky. They earn you a lot of money when the markets are good, but when the markets turn, they make you lose a lot of money. You should have a strategy which is in line with your financial goals and your risk return profile. Your strategy should be consistently followed in your investment term. You can take the help of a financial planner, investment advisor, a portfolio manager, in case you want to get a professional help in formulating an effective investment strategy. The second culprit is not having an investment time horizon. An investment time horizon is a time period that an investor takes to invest in a stock before he needs cash. If you are a short-term investor, your strategy needs to be different than a long-term investor. Time horizon plays an important role in your investment decisions. Time horizon also makes you estimate the expected returns from your investments. If you are a long-term investor, which we believe in, you can expect a larger returns from your investments as the factor of compounding comes into picture. If you are a long-term investor, you can take more aggressive decisions than a short-term investor. The third culprit is following the herd mentality. We often see that people buy when other are, others are buying and people sell when others are selling. But you should not follow the herd mentality and you should take a rational decision basis your own judgment. You should also study the stock before investing in it. To put it into words of John K. Getty, you should buy when everybody else is selling and you should hold it till everybody else is buying. This is the very essence of investing. Culprit number four is not investing in a staggered manner. You should always buy and sell your investments in a staggered manner. SIP is also again a great tool to accumulate your investments as it helps you average your holding cost. Culprit number five is margin of safety. Margin of safety is the difference between the market price of the share and the intrinsic value of the share. Even if we are buying growth shares, we should seek a margin of safety in the share price and it should not be overly expensive to the intrinsic value of the share. Like great investors, we should seek margin of safety in, in our investments. A margin of safety helps us protect from deep correction in the share price in times of market fall. Culprit number six is only looking at quantitative characteristics of the business. When we invest in a business, we should also look at qualitative characteristics of the business. The performance that we have currently should be sustainable in the future. Say for example, if we are investing in a dividend yielding share, if we lo look at only the dividend yield and not look at the sustainability of the cash flows of the business in the future, those dividends are not going to come in the future. In the next video, we are going to talk about how not to lose money from stock markets 
and we are also going to take some real life case studies thank you